I'm here with author and activist Shane Claiborne, who among other things is leading Red Letter Christians these days. And you are 120 miles into a 135 mile walk. So <laughs> talk about what this walk is about. I think right now in America, we are at a critical moment. Uh, we're, we're at a moment where we're realizing that I think a lot of us are realizing that white folks and people of color are experiencing a different America. You know, and I heard someone say that uh, our worldview is shaped by what we see out our window. And for me, I think a lot of us are experiencing this country through, uh, our, our experiences are di very different. And so when you ask, you know, white folks, do we have, does racial, you know, injustice affect our policing, systemic injustice. White folks go, no, you got a few bad cops, but the system works, you know? You ask people of color and they're like, yeah. I mean, you know, 80% usually say, yeah, we've got, a, you know, 400 years of history still has its residue. Yes. And so we're, we're reckoning with that. And that's what this march was about. I think we were um, public and visible. We're holding signs that say Black Lives Matter. And we can see people talking and bringing out their cameras and, you know, raising their hands in the air and doing a few, uh, you know, giving us other gestures I might not mention. <laughs> you might not yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. And it's been, it's been powerful just to, to see you step into this space. And, uh, and you're, you're a man of faith. I mean, you said Jesus is where you put your, all your eggs are in the Jesus basket. Yeah. So talk about why, if that's the case, you are so vocal about the racial injustice that's happening right now. Yeah, I, I wrote a book called Jesus for President where we're wrestling with some of this stuff. And I, I mean, at the heart of it, I think every time the early Christians were saying Jesus is Lord, they were saying Caesar is not, right? We've, we've pledged our allegiance. And as that old hymn, you know, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Like, that, that's where my hope is. I'm not looking for, when I vote, I'm not looking for a savior. I found my savior, but I'm looking for the person who might do the least amount of damage to the world. You know, I'm trying to harness the principalities and powers. And I think a lot of the things that we're talking about, um, they're not about the left and the right. They're about right and wrong. They go to the heart of our faith, like welcoming immigrants. Yeah. That shouldn't be a partisan thing. That's a Jesus thing. Yeah. Jesus said, when you welcome the stranger, you welcome me. I think when we put kids in cages, we do it to Jesus. What we do to the least of these, we do unto Christ. And so for me, a lot of the things that are happening in our country, they're not just political issues, they're spiritual issues. You know, to love my neighbor as myself means I, I, I care about racism. And I think if I can't say black lives matter unapologetically, passionately, then I don't really mean all lives matter. Because there is something about the personal relationship, right? There's something about the specific, particular love of God. I love that, you know, God so loved the world, but I also love that God loves Shane. You know, God loves love Chuck, Chuck, right? That's yeah. Right. And um, so uh, yeah. I, I heard, uh, it was a stand-up guy, I think it was Michael Sher or something. He goes, yeah, uh, if my, my wife comes up to me and says, honey, do you love me? I don't say, baby, I love everybody. <laughs> you know, right. I'm right. in big trouble. It's but a, like, we gotta be able to say, our whole history, 400 years of history, has, has degraded, dehumanized African-American folks. We said they were three-fifths human. We, in the Dred Scott case, said, you know, black folks don't have any rights that white people have to acknowledge. So to repair that history, we need to emphasize what 400 years of history has um, negated, you know? And so I think that's what, what we're reckoning with. And boy, if I had a dollar for every, every person that said all lives matter out there, I'd be a rich man, you know? We even had, I'll tell you one moment though that was so powerful is we had this car that came up and they saw the sign that said, we had a sign that said all life is precious. Yeah. And they gave us a thumbs up. And about 20 feet forward, they saw black lives matter and they gave us a thumbs down. And you're like, this, this, is, this is deep, this is running deep, you know? And someone else, as they came by, they shouted, yes, black lives matter, but white lives matter more. And I heard that more and it, it hurt my heart, you know? Wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you, you didn't start with this march and I know for you, it doesn't end with this march. What do you hope? I mean, you know, you're a person of faith. So where's your hope coming from? Where are you hoping to see and what are you doing beyond this march to bring that about? Well, I, I believe the scripture's right when, when, you know, Jesus says the truth will set you free. I believe that we, we, we've got some truth to reckon with. We, we've got to tell the truth about our past. We, we can't get our future right until we get our history right. And so being at places like this right. where we're reckoning right. with that history, uh, 
my brother Brian Stevenson down at Equal Justice Initiative, he's a dear friend, and he, you know, they're doing a lot to try to help us do better with our history. And uh, he often reminds us that uh, you don't remember uh, what happened in Germany by putting up statues to the Nazis. We put up memorials to the people whose lives were crushed by them. You know, we don't remember 9-11 by putting up a bunch of statues to the terrorists, right? Like we, but somehow with our racial history, we have a lot of monuments that recognize folks that were on the wrong side of history. We're, we're remembering uh, the victimizers rather than the victims. And so I think until we reckon with some of that, we're gonna keep spinning our wheels, you know, as we try to move forward. And it, you know, I, I, it's, it's no coincidence that some of this is coming on the tail end of the first black president, you know, in the yeah. Black Lives Matter movement, the changing demographics of America. And I think white folks are anxious, they're insecure sometimes. I think there's this white fragility and fear that, you know, we're becoming a minority, you know, we're, we're the changing of America, changing of, you know, Congress. And sometimes there's a, kind of a, a backlash or I think it was Van Jones who said there's a white lash you know it kind of to push back on that so when people are saying might make America great again I think many of them mean make America white again because you think like what era of American history would your folks like to relive yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. I'll right? let you know when yeah. we get to that era of history right <laughs> so yeah. yeah so I think this is a question you know mm. uh, do we want to go back or do we want to go forward together yeah. So, I mean, a lot of people who are hearing this are people who may have faith, um, but also may feel stuck. They may not know exactly how to engage. What would you say to them? What would you, what would you say to other white Christians? Because that's what you're really here representing as white clergy is saying, hey, there, it's time for white followers of Jesus to step in and not be on the sidelines. What would you say to someone who's early in that journey to yeah. encourage them? Well, a couple of things. One of them is I think we need, we need new eyes when we think about Jesus because I grew up with this little kind of hallmark white Jesus on our everything, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and yet it's very clear that Jesus came, God came into the world with a brown body. God came into the world as a brown skinned Palestinian Jewish refugee in the middle of a genocide. Like God leaves all the comfort of heaven to join the struggle here on earth and does that from birth to execution, right? Till he dies on the cross. And so as we look at Jesus, Jesus is absorbing all of the pain, the suffering of the world and putting violence and hatred on display on the cross and subverting it with love, with forgiveness, with an empty tomb. So that, that, we, if we don't get that right, then we, we end up with some really twisted theology. You know, one of my mentors said, all you gotta do is twist the cross and you get a swastika. And you know, there's been some really toxic theology. Hitler came to power with the Bible in his hand, you know, uh, abusing scripture, using religion as a weapon. Um, the KKK to this day has a whole part of their website about their theology, why they're a Christian organization. So Christian means Christ-like. And so the question is, you know, we, we can call anything Christian. The question is, how much does it uh, remind us of Jesus? Yeah. And that's what we're meant to do. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so that I think that that's a piece of this is that Jesus is near the suffering. But then if we're going to follow Jesus, Jesus is calling us to the margins. Jesus is calling us out of comfort. Uh, you know, so I, I, I think... Uh, some of our problem is not a compassion problem. It's a proximity problem. You know, uh, it's hard for white folks to understand racism because a lot of times we haven't experienced it. So we got we to gotta have relationships with each other. You know, so Dr. King was right when he grieved that one of the most segregated hours in the world is 11 o'clock on Sunday morning when the church gathers for worship. Uh, but I mean, you know, our Sunday morning services aren't going to change till our dinner tables change, till our living rooms change, till our lives, you know, resemble the beauty of God's uh, diverse family. Yeah. So, so we, we sometimes say, if it's all white, it's not quite right. You know, because we, we want to be, we're as wise as we are diverse. Because because of our cultures, our experiences, we're all seeing the world a little differently. And I think that's the difference between, uh, I, 
I'm, I'm getting to preach it, man. Chuck, preach it, stop, preach man. it, brother. No, I'll just say the last thing is I think I think we got a contrast between the Tower of Babel, which is a monoculture, and Pentecost. And the Tower of Babel was everybody was the same, one culture, colorblind, right? Like, and they were impressed with themselves, tried to build a tower to heaven, and God scatters it and creates culture and diversity and language. And then Pentecost is interesting because the book of Acts, you know, it goes into great detail about all the multicultural, you know, urban, rural, different places, different people. And it says everybody heard the gospel in their own tongue. And so you almost have this, you do have this celebration of diversity. And I think that's the difference, right? That sameness is not the same as oneness, right? Sameness was a Tower of Babel. Yeah. We're not going back. Right. Oneness exists absolutely. most powerfully absolutely. in diversity. Think and of a symphony. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. And that's Ephesians, right? That's yeah. the church. That's 1 Corinthians. That's Romans. It's not right? only it's God wants that. us to be colorblind. No. God wants us to no. see culture. God yeah. wants us to appreciate difference. And our systems and structures are not colorblind. So we got to be attentive to how this world treats people differently because of the color of their skin or anything else. That's right. Yeah. Well, Shane, you have been getting proximate to use the words of Brian Stevenson. You've been doing that for years. I'm deeply encouraged, and I just want to thank you for spending time, not just with us, but spending time in the margins, spending time with people who have a different story than you. And I'm just so encouraged by your presence here, encouraged by what you, Red Letter Christians, Faith in Action, um, Vote Common Good, what you guys are doing, it matters in this moment. And I just want you to know as one black brother who is a brother of yours through Christ, it matters deeply to me. Thank you, man. Thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Boom. <laughs>